Good morning, this glorious day. We've got a few announcements before we get started. And uh, so, a couple things. We are uh, collecting items for the garage sale. The garage sale will happen at a date to be determined. Uh, we don't know when yet, but bear with us, but we are collecting items for the garage sale. So as you go about doing a lot of spring cleaning in your homes, feel free to think about uh, the church garage sale and you can make appointments to drop items off. Unfortunately, we can't have anyone uh, available to help you. Uh, but if you can uh, get them here, then we will take them and put them in the gym until we have the garage sale. And hopefully that happens sooner rather than later. We also, Pastor Tim and I, are uh, doing pastoral care and Lord's Supper by appointments. So if you want to visit us, if you have needs that need to be taken care of, whether they're financial, spiritual, emotional, whatever they are, please come to us. And again, uh, we are doing Lord's Supper uh, by appointment. So if you're really missing the Lord's Supper this day, uh, come, give us a call and come in, and uh, we will certainly give that to you. Last thing is we are doing a youth group Zoom tonight. So if you uh, have high school and middle school age kids, uh, email me their email so that we can get them invited. It will be from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. And we are talking about apologetics, uh, defending of the faith. And so that ought to be a wonderful time for our youth to get together and join in fellowship in that way. I believe that is all that I have. As far as office hours and doing things, we are uh, maintaining course. I have office hours Monday through Wednesday, 8 to noon. Pastor Brandon has office hours Thursday through Saturday, 8 to noon, but we are available outside of those times as well. So give us a call, and uh, until then, uh, I'm praying for you, and we're all in this together. So uh, let us stand and greet each other in the name of the Lord with a nice wave. If you're at home, give a hug to those loved ones around you, and then uh, we'll get started here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous. Our God, God is merciful. merciful. I love the Lord, because he has heard my voice. And, and my pleas for mercy. Because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will, I will call on him as, as long as I live. live. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. What but shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will, I will pay, pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. <laughs>
stand for confession. Let us confess our sin to God, our merciful Father, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Creator and Preserver. We admit and confess our sinfulness. We are strained by sin from our very beginnings. We have sinned again and again in thought, word, and deed. We have loved our neighbors as ourselves and have turned away from one another in our thinking, speaking, and doing. We have done the evil you forbid, and have not done the good you demand. We do repent and are truly sorry for all our many sins. Have mercy on us, gracious Father. Forgive us all that is past, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, direct our lives so that we serve you in true faithfulness. Grant us victory over all that oppresses us, and build your kingdom among us here through, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In his boundless mercy, God has promised forgiveness of sins to those who repent and turn to him for restoration and renewal. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God keep you in his grace by the Holy Spirit, and grant you a life on earth in which you tell of his greatness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The Lord be with you. And also with you. That's great. O God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you fulfilled all the ancient promises. Grant to your faithful people rescue from the futility of this world and the freedom to serve you in endless joy through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading for today comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 14 and verses 36 through 41. Repent and be baptized. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what say we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, and for your children, and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our epistle this morning comes from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 17 through 25. Since you have been born again, love one another. And if you call on him as Father, who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for your sake, who through him are believers in God, who 
who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Since you have been born again, not to perishable seed, but to imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our holy gospel this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. Jesus is re recognized in the breaking of the bread. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And, the, and he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. And one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who, had, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back, saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets had spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going farther. For they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose the same hour and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven, and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed. And has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Is my mic dead? Swinging away. I swing? Okay. Um, let me grab this. Children, come forward, get close to your monitors, and uh, sit like you would if you were here today. So, I have one of these. It is a mask. And we all are, when we go out in public now, wearing masks. Or hopefully, if we're able to, wear masks so that we don't get sick with the COVID. We don't want to get sick. But, what if I told you there was a sickness greater than COVID, and a simple mask cannot protect you. This sickness, this illness, you already have. If you have, if you had COVID, if you had coronavirus, and you wore the mask, yes, it would stop the spread to others if they weren't infected. But this other illness I speak of, 
They have it too. You see, these simple masks are, are good for stopping the, this physical disease, but this spiritual sickness, this sin that I speak of, no mask can stop that. There's nothing that can stop the sin that is in you. This coronavirus, this COVID, it's taking a toll on each and every one of us. Our lives are changed. Normally, you'd be in school. High schoolers, if you're a senior, you would be looking to graduate. A lot of you that would be sitting here would just be excited about spring and how you get to go outside with your friends. But, alas, that is not the path that the Lord has us on right now. And with these masks, they might protect us from spreading the illness, but there's only one thing that can stop the illness of our sin. With coronavirus, we are hoping that a vaccine comes out sooner rather than later. Hopefully within the next year so that we can resume things like school, public gatherings, public worship. We are waiting on this vaccine. But the illness of sin, we already have that. We already have the vaccine that cures the sin. Christ. There is nothing Spirit, there's nothing like these masks spiritually that will help us. The only thing that will help us in our fight against sin is the vaccine. It is Christ alone. And so I want to challenge you, as you think and live in these coming days, weeks, months, before the coronavirus vaccine comes to you, be thinking about how you already have the vaccine of the Spirit. You have the Lord Jesus Christ in you. Those that have been baptized have the spirits of Christ on them. You are saved. You see these masks. They're good. Wear the masks. But they don't save you. There's nothing of this world that can save us except for Christ alone. So when you wear these masks, I want you to think about Christ, and how you already have that vaccine, how you are already cured of it, but we're still living in it. And amidst all of this physical illness, that is, if, if we look out at the world and see how physically ill it is now, that is our spiritual state. We are spiritually sick and dying. Coronavirus only has, what, less than a one percentage uh, death rate, mortality rate? Sin, 100%. 100% death rate because of sin. Christ is the only vaccine. And so during this time, I hope that you are in your scriptures. I hope that you are at Christ's feet, reading his words, listening to what he is saying. There's a lot of people out there that are going to tell you, oh, you just have to do this. Oh, you just have to do that. Wear a mask and you'll be fine, do this, do that. The only way to be saved is Christ alone. Allow us to pray now. Father in heaven, Lord, bless all the kids gathered around their monitors right now. Lord, bless the families, bless those with their children who are not currently in their homes, who are grown. Bless us all, Lord, as we just meditate on how you are our vaccine, Lord, to this illness that is sin, that is death. Lord, be with, these, be with these kids, be with these students, strengthen them, encourage them, and allow them to know the truth of Christ this day and every day. All of this, I pray, we pray, in your Son's holy and most precious name. Amen. Kids, don't go too far away from the monitor. Go back and sit with your families. That's fine. All right. Blessings.
of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The road to Emmaus is where we find ourselves today. And this text by Luke, who is known as the physician or the doctor, this text has a very specific structure to it. It begins in verse 13 with two disciples leaving Jerusalem, going to Emmaus. And it ends with two disciples in verse 33 returning to Jerusalem, leaving Emmaus to join with the eleven disciples. On both of these journeys to and from Jerusalem, Luke shows us that they were conversing. In verse 14, on the way out of Jerusalem, they were conversing about the things that had happened, how Christ had died. In verse 32, on the way back to Jerusalem, they were conversing about how they had seen the Christ and the scriptures had been opened to them. In verse 15, on the way out of Jerusalem, as they are conversing with one another, Jesus appears to them, but they don't recognize him. In verse 31, on the way back to Jerusalem, Jesus disappears from them, but they recognize him. In verse 16, in talking with Jesus, their eyes were kept from seeing from, and from understanding who he was. In verse 31, their eyes were opened from talking with Jesus, and they were able to see and understand who he was. And then we get to the center of the text, verses 17 through 30, where Jesus catechizes them, that is, to teach, and where the breaking of the bread occurs. This is the center of our text. These two disciples knew what had occurred, but their eyes were still shut. They did not yet know. Jesus actually chastises them. How foolish are you? And how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. And he continues to, he, and he continues, and he teaches them. And he says, and it says, and beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. But at the center here is the breaking of the bread. Verse 30, when he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. You see, these two disciples weren't with the eleven at the Last Supper in the upper room. These two were most likely part of the seventy-two that got sent out. They were disciples of Christ, but not on the inside group. They certainly knew who Jesus was, but the way that Luke lays it out for us, they couldn't see who Christ was until Christ broke the bread. You see, there are several layers that need to be addressed here. Firstly, they didn't know that it was Christ who joined them on the road. They knew factually of what had happened, of Christ's death on the cross and these things, but here on the road, they did not recognize him as Jesus. How was this possible? They had to have faith given to them from Christ himself. Secondly, in verse 31, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Their eyes were opened to Christ because of what had happened. The Lord was with them. And he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them. The breaking of the bread is what opened their eyes. And you see this parallels with the Last Supper. And it shows to us the church, the power that is in the Lord's Supper. That Christ is revealed to us through the meal. And this is why it's very difficult for me in this time, because we're not able to gather around the Lord's Supper as we are accustomed to. We are in a time of fasting from the Lord's Supper. But you see, the disciples at the Last Supper didn't know what was going to happen. But here on this side of the cross, the Lord's Supper fully displays the work of Christ through 
the meal. Thirdly, once they recognized him, Christ disappeared from their sight. What? You see, before the cross, they only had Christ in bodily form, as a human and not in the supper, because he had yet to have been crucified. But after the cross, they had Christ as bodily form in the meal. Christ had been revealed to them in faith as the resurrected Christ through the meal. There is incredible power in the Lord's Supper, in, with, and under the bread and the wine. So while he disappeared from their sight, he was still with them. Remember what the Lord said, For two or more are gathered, there am I. So we have this text, which is a fascinating text. And verse 31 is what I want to zoom in on. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. It was Christ who revealed himself to them, and they recognized him. It wasn't the disciples who revealed Christ to themselves. Christ did all of the revealing. Christ does all of the revealing to us today. Every step of our salvation is done through Him. He reveals Himself completely to us. Christ can only be made known as far as He reveals Himself to us. We have to make a distinction here, a clarification here. There is a difference between revealing, that is, in a relationship, and having a pure knowledge of Christ. Judas knew of Christ, but Christ wasn't revealed to him. One can have the knowledge of Jesus as a historical figure. Many people do. And you often hear people throwing around the name of Jesus with expletives or surprises or frustration. They know of the name of Jesus, but he hasn't been revealed to them. You can know Christ. You can know of Christ. But that doesn't mean he is revealed to you. Only Christ can reveal himself to you in his time. He, there were these two disciples who had known Christ before his death and saw this man who was Jesus. But they were kept from recognizing him as the risen Lord until Jesus deemed it right to do so. And the Lord, through this holy meal, where he broke bread with them, revealed himself to them and reveals himself to us. It is on Jesus to reveal himself to us. I'm going to say that again because it's very important. It is on Jesus to reveal himself to us. Often we place the burden on ourselves. We think that if we can speak eloquently enough, if we know enough about the Bible, if we have enough of it memorized, then we can reveal Christ to others. That's not how this works. Yes, we ought to speak well of the Lord. Yes, we ought to know the Bible back to front, front to back. Yes, we ought to have it memorized, but those are works of you, not works of the Lord. Only the good only the good works of the Lord can reveal. Only the good works of Christ can reveal. Only the good works of Christ can save. It's not your choice to say, Okay, Lord, I'm at a time in my life where I would like you to reveal yourself to me. No. The Lord reveals himself to you when he darn right pleases. And here's the hardest part for many of us. He reveals himself to our children and our grandchildren, our siblings and our friends, when he darn right pleases. Many of our kids, many of our grandkids may not be walking with the Lord. And we must understand that it is not, and we must understand that we are not walking with the Lord because of anything that we have done, 
But we are walking with the Lord because of everything that He has done. He revealed Himself to those disciples, even though they were with Him before Christ's death. They did not recognize Him until Jesus saw fit, which was at the Lord's table, at the breaking of the bread. It's not because of what we've done. It's not because of what I've done. It's because of what He has done. So think about our children, our grandchildren, our cousins, our friends, our siblings, our family members. We think about these people and we pray for them. We pray that the Lord's will be done in their lives. It's not because of me that they are saved, that they may be saved. It is only because of Christ that one may be saved. It is not because of my ability to speak the words or my knowledge that saves anyone. It's through Christ alone. Christ can certainly use me. He can certainly use any one of us. And I want to be used by Him. But it's not me or my strength that reveals Christ to others. It's not you or your strength that reveals Christ to others. It's the Holy Spirit's work. Remember, these two disciples knew Jesus before he died. They should have recognized him, but they did not. They were kept from recognizing him until Christ revealed himself to them through the Lord's Supper. Your children, your spouse, your friends, your family, they may not recognize Christ, yet they may know of him. They may know the stories, they may know the name of Jesus, but it is in Christ's will and time that he reveals himself to us. It's through faith. It's not through how good of a parent you are, not through how good of a friend you are, or how good of a family member you are. But salvation is through faith in Christ alone. So we pray. We pray for those who Christ has not yet revealed himself to. We call upon the name of the Lord. He certainly hears our prayers. He certainly hears our pleas. And in his time, he will reveal himself to all. I truly hope that we are able to gather sooner rather than later. I truly hope that once more we can gather around the Lord's table and break bread and drink of the cup. But for now, we must fast of this holy meal. It is in this meal, though, that Christ revealed himself to his disciples. And this is where the Lord reveals himself to us. He reveals himself through the body and the blood. He reveals himself to us through the holy word that is preached and taught. He reveals himself to us through the waters of his baptism, of our baptism. You see, you can schedule times to come in with us and partake of the Lord's Supper. Come join us at the table. Pastor Tim and I are dying to give you the Lord's Supper. Just ask and come in. Remember this, this day. Christ reveals himself to us in his time and in his ways. And I praise the Lord that he reveals himself to us. He is risen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now profess and confess the Lord through the Apostles' Creed. So let us stand and confess the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now will gather our tithes and offerings. And a quick note, uh, you can again give online or you can mail it into the church or you can drop it off in the church mailbox or to whoever's in the office. And one other note about the doxology, uh, we have a video online where you can bid, uh, record yourself singing the doxology so that we can all sing it together. But for now, let us sing it together in our homes and in our hearts. Guide and protect RJ. 
Hear now, Lord, as we pray the prayers you name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. O gracious God, you daily and richly grant us all things we need for this body and life. Bless our labors and grant us wisdom to use the fruits of those labors wisely and well for the care of our families, for the poor and their needs, and for the support of your work in this congregation. Preserve us from fear and greed as we live and work alone, and turn us instead in love toward our neighbors, however distant. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O blessed Lord, your word continues to go forth and bear good fruit. Bless the missionaries planting churches near and far. Bless those churches with whom we partner in the worldwide work of the gospel. And bless the congregations now struggling to fulfill your, your bidding and do what you have called them to do in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord God Almighty, through your Son you have kept the promise of the ages and rescued us from sin. You have raised up the dry bones of a people captive to death and made us alive in Christ forever. Sustain us in this hope that we may endure the tests, trials, and troubles of this life and be ready when our Savior comes again in his glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Hear us now, O Lord, as we pray the prayer that Christ taught his disciples to pray. Our, our God, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Merciful Lord, you have extended your hand of friendship to us through your Son, that we might no longer be enemies of your grace and purpose, but live in trust of your mercy and in accord with your holy will. Grant us the grace of your Spirit, so that we learn with joy to trust in your mercy, serve you in willing obedience, and live to the praise of your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now may the God of peace, who brought us again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good, that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. Go in peace as you serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.